Nancy had a lot of uh, friends who were involved in drugs and gang activities. There was one guy who was a poet and had a magazine, and he was also a drug pusher. And Phil was telling him about how much money he made. And the pusher says, why? I make more money in a week than you make in a year. Why don't you come over in my racket? And Phil said, yeah, maybe so. And Nancy didn't like that. And so as he became more and more involved with the criminals, Nancy became more and more upset. In August of 1970, Nancy takes their daughter and leaves the house in Santa Venetia. Depressed and driven by destructive behavior, Philip opens his house to the social outcast and the debauchery of young writers, bohemians, and junkies. At the end of the 1960s, in San Venetia, San Rafael, Philip K. Dick found himself very directly influenced by the young people he was meeting around his home. And in fact, it started to be that people would come by. It was a place to hang out or even a so-called crash pad, which meant that young people knew that they could sleep there if they needed a place to go and sleep. After high school, I left home and became reacquainted with Dennis. And he was staying at Philip K. Dick's house. And I needed a place to stay at the time. And so he suggested that I stay there. And so then when I got over there, the atmosphere was I was kind of like an open house, people coming and going, and it just seemed comfortable, though. And, but I was also very young. I wasn't even, yeah, I guess I was. I was just 18, and it was kind of refreshing to be around an adult that didn't have any rules. You ate when you wanted. You ate what you wanted. You went to bed when you wanted. You stayed up all night if you wanted. Oh, yes, I heard a lot of things. I mean, I just heard what a demise he was in and how he lived in a, in a pigsty and had really bad, you know, criminal, not criminal, but drug addict friends and, you know, hell's angels. 70, 71, street drugs, he lost his house, hospitalized three times, drugs and danger to self or others, which is called a 5150, 72 hour involuntary psychiatric hold. So Phil was going through some um, tough years in the 70s. He wasn't writing. I know he wasn't writing at the time. He would just sit and entertain these people when they would come and go. I think that because Philip K. Dick was an amphetamine user, his contact with the youth subculture probably came about partly because he was trying to buy amphetamine. And pretty soon, he made friends in that world. And then he started getting kind of uh, paranoid about people like spying on him and, you know, uh, there was some instance of someone breaking into his home and um, maybe that had to do with drugs. It probably did. Early in 1971, Philip K. Dick's house in Santa Venetia was broken into by somebody who was looking for something. He doesn't, he doesn't know. According to Phil, there was evidence that explosive had been used uh, to try to break into his locked file cabinets that he kept his manuscripts in. Everything that went on in that house seemed to make no sense to me. It was so different from what I thought of as reality. I wasn't used to seeing people doing drugs, and I wasn't used to all these you know, break-ins and weird things that happened. And, just every, every day was bizarre. I remember the big window here. It seemed like there were a lot of plants kind of covering it. Yeah, well, with that covering, it made it so much darker. Were you aware of all the, his worries about um, FBI and yeah. things like that? I always wonder what room was broken into. Oh, it was this, this room uh, back so here. <laughs> there was a twin bed against the window. And then there was a bookcase against this wall. And there was a file cabinet, you know, one of those taller this is ones. Where yeah, right there. Yeah. yeah. 
So and there was, was a. Was before you were here, right? He told no, you. I was here. Oh. I was here. Oh. I wasn't here when it got broken into, but okay. I came over after, and I saw dust on the floor and footprints in the dust. And so then when I came back, um, all the doorknobs had been removed off the doors in the house, and and the, um, there was plastic explosives. He said at, at the in the room that was his office. And he said his file cabinet had been blown up and somebody had taken manuscripts and all this crazy stuff had happened. We know that at the time of the break-in, Philip K. Dick thought, thank God I'm not crazy. I have real enemies. It is a tremendous relief to discover that somebody really is after me. At this time, he became obsessed with discovering who his real enemies were. He gave a lot of interviews saying that he thought the federal government maybe hit his house, or maybe it was this, or maybe it was that. There was a big article in Rolling Stone that Paul Williams uh, edited that was all these different theories about what happened in his house. When I interviewed Phil Dick for Rolling Stone, it was uh, 1974, and um, Phil would talk about his many theories as to what had happened. He often guessed that the government was looking for information about him. He wasn't simply making it up out of whole cloth. He did have the evidence of his house being broken into in an almost paramilitary style. Uh, his safe and uh, a filing cabinet had been blown open by apparently very sophisticated uh, explosives and very selective things had been taken. He suggested, for example, and I quoted in my Rolling Stone article, that there were things that he'd written in his science fiction novels that were too close to the truth, or that were frightening to the government in some way. And they wanted to know, how did he know? How did he know about that? He also was very aware of the Black Panthers who lived in the neighborhood. He went through all these theories. It was the feds, it was the government, it was this, it was that, it was a drug addict. Altogether, there was really a fairly substantial group of people that he could suspect, you know, uh, might be malignantly after him. Um, so it wasn't paranoia. You know, here, here's a minor American writer, you know, a little genre guy getting published in these crappy little pulp magazines. The next thing you know, he's, you know, telling people about how the FBI is breaking in through his window and, you know, some, some book he wrote, uh, somehow contained something real in it that the FBI was trying to, to cover up. I mean, that's been kind of a, uh, a science fiction uh, writer's legend for a long time. And then he tells that the police theory was that he did it himself. He thought that was very funny. And so he made a big joke out of the police th theory that uh, Philip K. Dick had somehow brought in explosives and blown up his own files for some obscure reason. Well, years later, he told me that he was pretty sure it was just because he was taking drugs at the time that it was a drug hit. As you know, in the late 1960s, experimentation with mind-altering drugs became common among artists who sought new forms of expression. Philip K. Dick was no exception to this. His activity with psychedelics may have contributed to his extrasensory experiences. The connection between drugs and what I was saying earlier about his skepticism about reality really finds um, expression in the LSD culture. People like Timothy Leary, the feeling that the experience one had under drugs was revealing that this is all an elaborate play being staged for our benefit to keep us politically quiescent. And drugs allow you to see behind behind that facade and realize that there is another reality. But Phil only took LSD twice. And both times, I gave it to him. 